This is a practical example to show how the gradient descent works. For, uh, for us to clearly understand, I just have taken uh, one data frame. I have created a data frame of my own having six values, uh, having two attributes. Okay, So the first attribute is an independent attribute. The second attribute is a dependent attribute. And I have printed the same. There are six uh, rows and two columns. A is your independent attribute and B is your dependent attribute. Why I took this is like, we know that uh, the linear regression package of your SQLN library least squares regression. So, uh, I am going to fit a regression line for this sample data set using the linear regression and I am going to check whether uh, near values are, be, are able to get arrived using the gradient descent methodology. Uh, what I did is I have imported the package, created an object for linear regression so I'm trying to fit a line, okay, for the values. What is train underscore x? It is nothing but uh, the x at first attribute zero from one to six, and uh, the train underscore y is nothing but the dependent attribute whose values are ranging from 40, 38, and these six values, right? So when I print the coefficient, I'm able to uh, understand that uh, the value of m, which is slope, is going to be 3.77, and the intercept is calculated to be 31.13 using least square. Okay, let us see whether a near optimal value or the same value can be achieved using your gradient descent. Also, so before that, I just have plotted this. Okay, and when I'm plotting, I came to know that so. There are no points that are below this 30. We can, instead of starting the intercept value to be 0 or 1, I feel like we can start from 30 itself because it is a common intercept. What is an intercept? It is a value of y when x is equal to 0. Okay. Let's see whether we are able to arrive at the same value. See, now that I have taken the same data, right? So, 1 to 6 as my independent value. My dependent values are given. I have predicted. Okay, how to predict? I am going to assume the value of m is 3 and c is 30. I am going to start with that. If we don't know, we can start even with 0. The only thing is it will take number of iterations. That's all. Okay. So, how to calculate this? y is equal to mx plus c. This is m. This is x. The column of a is what we call as x plus this intercept. Okay. 3 into 1 plus 30. Then 3 into 2 plus uh, 30, 3 into 3 plus 30, then we have calculated the predicted values, right? So this is the difference between the actual and the predicted value multiplied by A. Why are we multiplying? We have to calculate the partial differences both with respect to M and with respect to C so that we can arrive at the local minimum, right? So in order to do so, we have calculated the difference between this value and this value multiplied by this value. So that is what with respect to M. With respect to C, just you don't need to multiply because it's a bias in the system. So it's just the difference between these two. That is with respect to C. Okay. And what is the mean square error? Okay. What is the mean square error? Difference between actual and predicted multiplied by. So you have to square this difference and then finally take a root. Okay. So and this is the mean square difference of the entire data set. This is the mean of all the errors with respect to the slope. This is the error of all the, the, sorry, this is the mean of all the errors with respect to C. Now it's a simple calculation. How to predict the new weight? Because X and Y we cannot change at any point of time. Okay. So we are going to, we can arrive at a va an optimum value of M and C alone. Okay. By varying M and C, we can check whether the difference between your actual and the predicted value can become zero the new value of m, m is equal to m minus three parameters you have to multiply. One is the actual difference, predicted minus actual difference multiplied by the attribute. Okay, so you have to obtain the weightage of that attribute multiplied by the learning rate. Learning rate says how fast are you going to descend or ascend. Okay, initially you can start with a little higher learning rate, then you can reduce as and when you, you think you move near to the lockdown or local minimum. Since the MSE is very high, I am assuming to be 0 0.05. A learning rate 0 to 1, any value you can assume, it depends on the data set. Okay, since we already know what is an intercept and the M is near to that, I have started by 0 0.05. But if you are starting with 1 or 0, you can have higher learning rate like 0 0.5 even. Okay, 
Now, by applying these two formula, we are arriving at the new M. Okay. So, I'll change. I'll show the formula. Just check. It is Yes, these are the new values. Okay, just what to do? We need to, I am copy pasting here. Okay, to check what is the actual value now. Okay, again, whatever we are getting, just we have to copy and paste it here as the values. Now you can see the deviation grows more. Okay, and hence the learning rate is not proper. And hence, I am going to change my learning rate to be 0 0.02. Okay. So, again and again, we need to repeat the same until now you can see the values, the new MNC. Just we have to apply this form here. Okay. And the, uh, when we when I copy paste here itself, you can see the difference over here. Okay, this MSC gets reduced. Earlier it was six point something. Now it is four point something. Okay. Now again you have to every time when I copy and paste the values, you can see how it gets changed. And this process needs to get continued until we get a MSC as appropriate. Like let's say yeah, I may think. Uh, an MSC of 2 is okay. Okay. Or I may think that an MSC of 0 is most prominent. Depending on our requirement, we can run this any number of times to obtain the possible values. So I'll run the iterations, and every time you can see the value of M starts to decrease, the value of C starts to increase, and hence it is nearing your global minimum. Okay. You can see the difference. Earlier it was 969, now it is 966 and here it is 28, here it is 2.28.29. Okay. Now if you want, you can increase the learning rate a little bit. If you are more making too many iterations, you can change a little bit learning rate. Okay. And again, when I copy paste, see, it's getting reduced. Right. So... But every time you should have an eye on the values, whichever we are having as the total of mean of MSC and the mean of mean with respect to M. Okay, when it take a different direction, you have to be much more careful in reducing the learning rate. I am doing uh, the repeated steps. Just watch how uh, the difference is happening. Now you see, when I rerun this, see the mean square error gets increased. Okay, so this is the point where we can start reducing our linear learning rate. Um, uh, when we are uh, in, uh, increasing the values here, okay, we are uh, roaming here around, okay, these values and hence this is the near optimum that we can able to get through your gradient descent, okay. Even after this, you can rerun by changing the learning rate to be 0 0.001. If, you, if as and when you reduce, you can go near to the optimum as the same value that you are getting from the least coarse regression. Thank you.